In this video, I wanna walk you through the building blocks of a church audio system, specifically the PA system, which entails the speakers and the amplifiers that are gonna be producing the majority of the sound that you're gonna hear in the room as a attendee for worship services or other events. PA systems are not terribly complex. Obviously, that can vary on the project or the church space. The one we're in right now is a job that we're, we just wrapped up actually deploying a new speaker system and amplifiers. We're tying them into the rest of the audio system. We're deploying with a new mixing console, stage box, microphones, etc. cetera. Um, but I wanted to show you this great case study of a PA system so you just at least understand um, a little bit more than, oh, we're just buying a few boxes and just just hanging them up and, and turning them on. There we go. It, there's a little bit more to the process. So the first step of the process is design. You want to make sure that the speaker design and layout is, is done well, it's done properly, and it's taking into account different aspects of the room like your room dimensions, uh, the materials and the surfaces of the floor, the ceiling, the walls, and how sound is going to interact with those surfaces so that uh, when someone's sitting in the middle of the room, uh, you're actually able to even model that ahead of time, what they're gonna be hearing and how loud it's gonna be based on the type of speakers that you deploy. So our audio system designer uses the best software to model all of this ahead of time and to produce uh, the designs that you see in our videos. So that's the first step of implementing a new PA system is make sure you have a proper design process happen first before you start just going and buying new speakers to deploy. Acoustic treatment is another very important thing to keep in mind before you start buying new speakers and amplifiers for your church's audio system. So here we actually have some wall panels in this room and you want to, again, going back to that design conversation and when you're assessing the surfaces that audio is gonna be bouncing off in your room, you want to bring that reverb time to be ideally less than two seconds long. And that reverb time is gonna be significantly affected by the absorption on walls. I would prefer and recommend seeing how much absorption you can get by installing wall panels. And then if you still need more absorption, then you can add some additional absorption to your ceiling. In this church in particular, they really didn't want to touch the ceiling. They wanted to keep the, the original uh, wooden architecture of it and the design of it because it, it does look awesome. And th there are acoustical solutions for ceilings like this that would look like they're wood panels and you know, you can totally go that route, but of course that's gonna be additional costs. So make sure you do take into account acoustical treatment solutions before you start deploying a new PA system at your church. Here's a closer look at the DX1577 by Fulcrum Acoustic. It is a three-way speaker with two 15-inch transducers. So the benefit of a three-way speaker is you've got the tweeter component in the center of this coaxial driver here that gets your highest frequencies. And then the woofer around that tweeter gets the mid-range frequencies. And then for everything that's about 300 and below, you have this other woofer over here. So by separating out the frequencies, it really uh, increases the, the clarity and the dynamic range of, of audio that this speaker can produce. And this is one of the unique things about Fulcrum Acoustics technology, their coaxial speaker. Uh, by being able to combine the tweeter and the woofer into one, it can make the speakers more compact. So you're not having to fly larger boxes or install larger boxes in your space. In this system, we have the CCX896 downfills by Fulcrum Acoustic. This is again the coaxial sp type speaker, which allows you to have the tweeter and the woofer in one, keeping it uh, nice and compact. So here is what the combination looks like with the downfill with the main DX1576 above it. The custom flyware in this system is by Polar Focus. We send them all of the measurements of our rigging points, such as this beam right here, as well as the PA design. And they are able to custom fabricate all of the steel hardware that you see here. So this is Bipolar Focus. Everything you see up here is Bipolar Focus. And then we have the Fulcrum Acoustic Yoke 
that was made for the speaker by Fulcrum Acoustic down here. And that attaches to the Polar Focus Flywear. This allows us to have very compact rigging that it saves space and it also looks great. And most importantly, it is structurally sound. Here is a closer look at the Fulcrum Acoustic 218L Passive Cardioid Subwoofer. And the technology they packed in this subwoofer allows it to have most of the sound coming out of the front and uh, it reduces the amount of sound coming out behind the sub. That's what it means by being a, having a cardioid pattern because we want the sub energy to come out towards the congregation and not backwards onto the stage. And that's one of the challenges of subwoofers is they have very low control over the direction of the, their low frequency energy. So that's why you have to think about different solutions for placement. And when you fly a subwoofer like this, it does really allow you to fill the whole space quite evenly. And our audio designer spec this sub to be at a 15 degree uh, down angle for even more optimal coverage coming down towards the congregation. And then we have Polar Focus custom flywear here. We've got these steel brackets with bolts going through the beams and we've got some uh, aircraft cable. And then we have these steel plates that are then bolted into the sides of the subwoofer here for safe rigging. I do think if you want a little bit more of that thump, if you want to feel the subs a little bit more in the base uh, in the ground, which kind of adds almost like this 4D effect to the base, then putting them on the floor will make sense. But to have more even coverage when your subs are on the floor, you're probably going to have to have more of them across the width of the stage or close to the width of the room uh, so that there's not a bunch of uh, hot spots and dead spots with your uh, sub frequency. So keep those things in mind. In this space, a lot of churches we're working with have this traditional space that you know seats a couple hundred people. This dual 18 sub in here, it feels fantastic. Like you can, I was actually pretty blown away having it flown, how much I still like feel that base, um, even though it's you know close to like 30 feet up in the air. It really fills this space well. Our, our designer did a great job with that. The PA system that we have here and one that we commonly deploy is a uh, system of passive speakers. That means that the speakers themselves, they're not powered. Um, you have just a, an audio cable, a speaker cable that's running up to those speakers to, uh, to power them and obviously supply the audio signal. And right here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight different speaker cables that are running to the speakers. We actually only have one, two, three, four, five speakers, but some of those speakers, because they have multiple drivers, are actually getting uh, multiple cables run to them, like our two subs, two mains. Um, they're each getting a pair of cables running to them for a more optimal setup and how we're driving them with our processor and amplifier. In some cases, you're gonna have speakers that are powered, so they actually have amplifiers built into them. Uh, one of the lines of speakers we carried, Meyer Systems, pretty much all their speakers are powered. Um, and you'll have a processor in your rack room like we have right here that can provide the EQ and the, pro the proper processing for those speakers, but the power itself will need to be supplied up at the speakers. One nice thing about passive speaker system is that passive speakers are lighter because they don't contain a power amplifier in them. So that, that can ease some of the process when it comes to how you deploy them and how you rig them. You're not having to account for the additional weight and the additional uh, power that you need to supply up to uh, the speakers themselves. So those are some pros and cons to passive versus active speakers. I don't really think uh, there's a right or wrong way. It really just depends on your preferences and design preferences. Uh, some of the manufacturers, if you have preferences of what brand you wanna go with, um, it's gonna look different. But I think the majority of cases, it's gonna be passive like this, where you have all the speaker cable coming from the speakers, and then they go back into the amp and this is actually both an amp and a processor uh, so this is a PowerSoft Unica and this is an eight channel amp it's got plenty of power to drive uh, all of the speakers and again this is something where our audio designer he knows this a lot better than I do just making sure that we're supplying adequate power 
to the speaker system. Um, if we had more speakers in the system, we'd probably be specking another amp right here to account for the, the power needs uh, with that type of system. But for this system being relatively compact, we're able to get away with this one powerful amplifier. And what's also cool about this amplifier is it's a processor so that what our audio designer did when he tuned the PA, the PA system, he's able to actually you know, set up his reference mics in the room and he can, again, this is his scientific method that he understands a lot better than I do, but he's basically able to apply additional uh, impulse response filters and equalization uh, at the amp level here in the processor so that what we're sending off of our, our main mix at front of house, we're not really having to put any graphic EQs on the master mix or anything like that. Uh, we can mix our channels in our buses and have a nice, basically a flat reference to work with in the room because he detected any trouble frequencies uh, that were in the space based on his reference mic and smart software. And he was able to you know, make some cuts uh, in the equaliz equalization uh, at the amp level right here. Um, and then what's also great about that is a lot of that you know, more scientific equalization happens here at the amp and it's already taken care of. It only has to be done once so that when our volunteers are running the console, it's, it's simpler. Uh, they're not gonna have to be doing a bunch of equalization to their main outputs that are going to the speakers because the audio designer and our tuner, uh, he's, he configured it properly. Uh, so that's gonna sound great uh, pretty much no matter what when you send a master mix here. Of course, it's, it's not gonna make a poor operation at the mixing console sound better, um, but it's gonna make it way easier for volunteers. And of course, it's gonna make it easier for, for pros who get back there and they can just focus on processing channels in buses. And then finally, we're back at the mixing system. This church in particular, we deployed one of our favorite consoles, the Waves LV1. Lots of fun magic can happen here in this console. But before you know, we can even worry about what mixer we're using, it's actually really important to put the time and effort to properly design your PA system like you just saw. Get the acoustic treatment right, get the rigging right, get the box selection and design right, and your all your coverage angles and coverage patterns, get the amp spec right, and get it all tuned. And then we can come back to the mixing console and start having fun because we have a great basically a reference point to start producing some uh, fantastic mixes uh, for both in person and then that's probably going to also really translate well online. And that concludes this walkthrough of a church PA system. I hope you found it helpful. If you would like to learn more, check out the other videos on our channel. You can dive into videos about our mixing systems that we deploy as well. And if you'd like to work with our team, if you'd like us to deploy a new PA system at your church, well, we'd love to work with you. You can go learn more about working with us at churchfront.com. Just fill out the form on the website and we'll chat with you soon. Thanks so much for watching. Leave a comment and question down below and we'll see you next time.